Section 10.1, sequences. A sequence is a list of elements in a defined order. So I have some examples. One, two, three, four, five is a sequence. Um, it doesn't have to be numbers, listing out months. January, February, March through December would be a sequence. Or it could be fractions, one half, one third, one fourth. And then I'll talk about these three little dots in a second. So the first type of sequence is called finite. A finite sequence has a finite number of items. So the first two would be finite. They end. An infinite sequence has no last term. So that would be the last one that I listed. Um, and we will use an ellipsis to sh indicate that the pattern continues. So these three little dots tell us that it keeps going, tells us that it's infinite. And so it's assumed that the next term is one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, and then so on and so on. Um, what we're also gonna do is find a formula for the general term. We call it the nth term or the general term of a sequence. And it'll be given like a traditional function. So we'll call it a sub n and n is only whole numbers. So the domain is only whole numbers, one, two, three, four, five. So we can't find f of one half, but we'll find a1, a2, a3, all the way up to an. So that's what I mean by the domain is whole numbers. We only plug in whole numbers. So let's check a couple out in example one. So let's find the first five terms of the following sequences. So we have n over n plus one. So we'll find a1, a2, a3, a4 and A5. So we just plug in one through five. So A1 would be one over one plus one or one half, just plugging in for N. A2, same idea, it would be two over two plus one or two thirds, three over three plus one or three fourths, and then four over four plus four and five over five plus five. So we'll get four fifths and five sixths. And those would be my first five terms of the sequence. It's just a list of numbers. Let's try another one. It's a little messier. So we have negative one to the n, two to the n all over n. And again, we'll do the first five. So we'll get negative one to the one, two to the one over one. I'm gonna list them all out and then simplify. So then we'll get negative one to the two, two to the two over two, negative one to the three, two to the three over three. Again, just plugging in for n. Negative one to the four, two to the four over four, and then negative one to the fifth, two to the fifth over five. And that is my sequence, but let's see if we can simplify it a little bit. So what is this negative one doing? So the negative one is just kind of rotating between negative and positive. So negative one to the one would be negative. Negative one to the two would be positive. Negative one to the three would be negative. So you'll just see that it's rotating, right? Even powers are positive. So negative one to the fourth is positive and odd powers are negative. So negative one to the fifth is negative. So that's all the negative one is doing is rotating between positive and negative signs. And then let's go ahead and do the rest. So we get negative two over one or negative two. We get positive four over two, which would be positive two. We get next one would be two to the third would be eight. So negative eight over three, that doesn't simplify. So I'll just rewrite it. Next one's positive. We get two to the fourth is 16 over four or we get four. And then two to the fifth is 32. So negative 32 over five is my five, fifth term. And so those are the first five terms. And we, it could keep going. We don't know how many terms there are. Um, there could be more than five, but we're just finding the first five to get used to these formulas. Let's try finding the general formula now. So now I have a sequence. I have one third, negative one ninth, 1 over 27, negative 1 over 81, 1 over 243, and we want to find the general term. So we want to find an equation in terms of n. So there's two things I notice going on here. 
I notice um, we have positive and negative terms. So that means we'll have some sort of negative one to some power in the formula, because that's what's gonna make it switch from positive to negative. And then I also notice powers of three in the denominator. Three, nine, 27. So let's check out, how do we figure out what powers to do? So one third is my A1. So that means when I plug in one, I need to get one third. A2 is negative one ninth. When I plug in two, I need to get negative one ninth. A3 is one over 27. A4 is negative one over 81. And A5 is one over 243. So I need to make um, powers of three. And that looks like we got that pretty quickly. We have one over three to the one, negative one over three squared, right? One over three cubed. So it looks like my a n has something over three to the n. The threes match up. And then this one's a little different than the previous one. Notice my even terms are the negative ones now. The second and the fourth term are negative. So if we do negative one to the n, like the previous example, um, my odd terms were negative, right? The first and the third were negative. So we're gonna have to change that power a little bit. So negative one to the n will make the odd terms negative and the even terms positive. And that's, again, because odd powers stay negative, right? And then even powers would turn positive. So all we have to do is add a 1, and it shifts it. So why does that work? So if I plug in 1 now, we get negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, or negative 1 squared. And then if I plug in 2, I get a 2 plus 1, so I end up going back to an odd power. So that'll make the odd terms positive and the even terms negative. So that'll be my numerator, negative one to the n plus one. So we'll use n when we want odd terms negative and we'll use n plus one when we want even terms negative. 